Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So we've seen a couple different ways that SQL Script can be utilized via development objects. And we've seen the stored procedure, the table function, the scalar function, and of course the uh, newest addition, which is the libraries concept. But there's actually a way to use SQL Script without any kind of procedure or function or library wrapper. And this allows us to use SQL Script directly within the SQL console or SQL command line, which can be a very powerful and useful technique if you're doing a lot of scripting of uh, the database directly. I know a lot of administrators uh, do command line scripts and, and personally a lot of developers use the SQL console for troubleshooting um, and testing and other sort of... Uh, 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 you know, just poking around, playing with the system sort of thing. And to be able to go beyond the limitations of just plain SQL and also use the more powerful data flow and imperative logic and things like that that we get with SQL Script, well, that's a, that's a pretty great addition. And the little technique that we use to, to be able to plug SQL Script into these other environments without a, a wrapper is uh, something we call anonymous blocks. So this allows us to directly execute uh, SQL script logic without a procedure function or library wrapper, which means we don't have to create a, a, a design time artifact or even a runtime artifact. We can just execute SQL script on the fly by DE. And actually this time we're not going to create anything in the editor. We're just going to stay here in the database explorer because this isn't the kind of thing where we need to uh, to need to be creating anything in advance. And I'll just go ahead and open the SQL console. I can do that here from the from the right mouse click uh, on a particular container, or I can select that container and hit the SQL console button. And now I've got an empty SQL console. An anonymous block basically looks like this. You have to give it a do command with your input parameters and output parameters, basically the signature header. Um, just like you would have in a stored procedure. Then you have a begin block and an end block, also just like a, uh, a stored procedure, but we're just doing it in line here in the SQL console. So basically now we could take, for instance, the logic from one of our procedures, like uh, this get PO header data, and, uh, and copy it in. We'll just start here, uh, everything between the begin and end. We'll take it and put it in the begin and end of our anonymous block. Okay. And uh, now we need the signature. So we can come over here and essentially get the signature. Everything goes in between the brackets after the name of the procedure. And we don't have a name in our anonymous block. We just have this do statement. So that's like our, that's like our procedure and name. Uh, it's just do, and uh, we'll insert the signature right there. And uh, we'll end up with basically the same thing that we have here as a reusable stored procedure, but nicely in line here in the SQL console. I'll switch back to the SQL console, and at this point, I can just go ahead and run this. Oh, and I've got an error message. What did I mess up here? Oh, I should have adjusted, ah, yes. Um, because we don't have, um, uh, we have an output here, but we have, to, we have to map that, okay? So there's a little bit different in the signature. We have to take our parameters and we have to uh, uh, assign them uh, to a query parameter or a query parameter placeholder. So that's where we get this saying basically output this parameter to question mark. And question mark means that we'll pipe it to the console, in which case that's where we get our output when we run it in the in the SQL console. So yeah, I missed that step. That's that's bad of me, but that's good because that uh, that actually uh, allowed me to expand on what that what that little me thing means. Sometimes we just type the equal greater than sign um, question mark, and we don't really know why we're doing it. That's why that means to pipe it to the uh, to the output there. And uh, when I execute. I'm not getting my, I'm not 
Oh, uh, because I was getting my output, but I made my screen too small down there. There it is. almost thought I had messed something up again, but I didn't. I just resized the screen where I couldn't see it. Uh, but we get our, our output just as we would have had if we had ran the stored procedure itself. Um, but no pr stored procedure was created. There's nothing new. You know, if I would come here to the, to the procedures, uh, there was nothing created called do. There's nothing persisted. It's all just temporary. If I close the SQL console window, it would, of course, uh, be lost unless, uh, unless I were to, say, download the SQL console and save it. Or, uh, you know, we, have, we do have the statement library, uh, so uh, I'd have to add a description to it, but then I could save it uh, to the statement library and then call it up uh, again. So we do have a, way, a couple ways to persist this content, but you can imagine, as I said, if you have scripts that you run multiple times uh, and you want to use imperative logic or data flow in those scripts, this is a, this is a very powerful uh, addition to those kinds of capabilities.